Welcome back to Nerd Fed. I'm Whitmo. He's Fimo. We ain't got time for full names today. We got some news. I feel like you're using up all the time you save by skipping our, our name. Our name. Okay, first up, uh, X-Men-ish movie news. A few months ago, hot off that dirty mouth success of Deadpool, Fox announced that they were down to make Wolverine 3 R-rated. Fuck yes! Then yesterday, we got a page of the script from director James Mangold, and he's not fucking kidding! Not only is this movie gonna be R-rated with the first word we have Logan saying being the old F-bomb 3000. The fuck word. Oh my gosh, she said it twice. <laughs> but it also isn't going to be a quote, hyper choreographed, gravity defined, city block destroying, CG fuckathon. So it sounds like they're setting this up to be an almost anti modern superhero movie. The movie, which is officially called Logan, by the way, will have characters actually die when they get hurt rather <gasps> than somehow nimbly always evading death as the world falls apart around. Look out! Ah! Evaded. <laughs> and what's really cool is that this is also going to apply to old Wolvie himself. We know that this storyline is being adapted from the Old Man Logan comic book storyline, and so Old Man Wolvie isn't gonna have quite the same level of regenerative powers that we've seen in the past. Like, you remember how in X-Men 2 when Logan gets shot in the head and his brain and skull kind of just like push the bullet back out? Yeah, he might not be able to do that anymore. This version of Logan actually lives in a constant state of chronic pain and turns to daddy's best painkiller, alcohol, to try to soothe his hurt. Who doesn't live in a state of chronic pain though, am I right? I'm right. And here's why I'm pumped for this. If you're like us, you just binged Luke Cage recently, and for me, honestly, the story didn't really take off until they found a way to hurt the indestructible man. Correct. So Wolverine kinda has that same issue, and I remember when I first saw in the comics where Magneto actually freaking rips the adamantium off of Wolverine's bones and it comes pouring out his open wounds. Talking about the first time it happened, by the way, in the 90s. And that was the moment where I was like, holy crap, the man can really be hurt or even killed, and you need to feel like your hero is in danger to actually feel the stakes of the film. And it's kinda one of the reasons why people have a lot of trouble making a Superman movie that's good. Shots fired. Super. And that brings us to the new poster that came out and holy crap this is a great poster and check out Logan's hand. You see that? Those are scars as in places where he didn't totally heal. I love this poster so much. Can we reenact it real quick? Oh of course you get to be. I'll be the little baby hand. Yeah. I'll be the little baby hand. A very long baby <laughs> hand. Some people were talking about how the poster kind of reminds them of Schindler's List, which I kind of see, but that movie's all about a good man trying to save innocent lives, and I don't think that's what this movie's gonna be. This poster reminds me a lot more of the poster for Leon the Professional, and just that whole movie itself. Why? Explain yourself, Fimo. Because that movie isn't about good people. It's about a hitman who takes a young little girl, little Natalie Portman, under his wing after her family's murdered, and she becomes his protege. She learns the hitman trade herself, and that to me is more likely what kind of relationship will Wolverine could have with this little mutant child who reportedly has been raised by the government to kill, kill, kill. Right, right. Tie, 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 tie. Rap is reporting that she's got two claws instead of Logan's three, and so yeah, this all should sound familiar because that sounds a lot like X23 slash Laura Kinney, the female clone of Wolverine who is the current Wolverine in the comics. She's damn fine, by the way. And she's so, so, so murderous. You got that thirst for blood that we all look for in our ladies? Now, X-23 is a lot older in the version we know her as, but maybe this movie will take place over a lot of years or something. We know that it is set in the year 2024, so maybe it'll just like keep going after that further into the future. Oh, and that brings us to our latest news about this movie today, and it is going to make us cry. So, we've known for a little bit that Stephen Merchant is playing Caliban in this movie. Who we kind of already saw in Apocalypse, but they might be ignoring that version. Right, and he's going to be helping Logan take care of a really old version of Charles Xavier, and now... Say, say, make sure to say Egg Xavier. Xavier? Yeah, That's not how you say it. Right, and he's gonna be helping Logan take care of a really old version of Charles Xavier. Is that better? Yeah. And now we know that they weren't kidding that old Professor X really needs to be taken care of. Today they released this official portrait of the guy. Ooh. Is this not the saddest thing you've ever seen? I feel like you just are supposed to stare into those blank, like, cataracty eyes and listen to Johnny Cash's hurt on repeat and just, like, cry your human tears out forever. Apparently, Professor X here is suffering from dementia, struggling to even remember Logan, and his powers are also increasingly unstable. Which, that part, super fascinating, because considering he's one of the most powerful telepaths in the Marvel Universe, and he could kind of just like kill people by thinking too hard? Who knows what's gonna happen when he's out of control and all loopy. But anyway, this picture makes it real clear why Patrick Stewart said this will likely be his last time playing Professor X. You don't really bounce back from this. And because I don't want to end this on such a downer, I'm gonna point out the little poster for this movie, that little baby hand, it's got the longest fingers. Like what is up with that? Imagine if all babies had these eight inch fingers. Ew, gross. No. Love me, mama. No! Love oh. me, mama. I don't want to think about it. 
All right, question three. It crawls three. out of the vagina. Why are these fingers so long? <laughs> That's disgusting. But also, do you think this movie's gonna be too serious? No, I do not, because I want all the tears for this one. I just wanna know human emotion just one time, please. Ah, uh, but you never will. But you are about to have all of your Gears of War cravings quelled, because it looks like there's gonna be no shortage to that ongoing fight against the Locust Horde. Gears of War 4 was released, and while they completely missed the opportunity to call it Gears of 4, the reviews are in, and they seem pretty promising. The general consensus is that Gears of 4, we are calling it that forever, it plays a lot like the original game. It's still a cover-based shooter. The active reload minigame is the same. Your teammates still yell out, REVIVE ME! Which is totally something someone would say when they're injured. No. However, it does seem like they've added a couple improvements to the way the game plays. For example, they added a gun that fires over cover. Ooh. And the scenery is generally more destroyable, which can help in some situations like knocking down an egg to hide behind, but can also make for a lot more chaos when paired with the extreme weather conditions. Also, it's got a couple of new characters. You play as JD Phoenix, who's the son of the original protagonist Marcus, and he's just full of wisecracks. He's basically the Nathan Drake of the Gears of War franchise. Now, there was some criticism that the game ends too abruptly, but if you are a Gears of War fan, we think you should check it out for yourself since it definitely does sound like a fun time. By the way, it's an Xbox Play Anywhere title, so buying it digitally on Xbox One gives you access to the PC version and vice versa. Secret, secret, secret Hot secret, tips. Secrets. Hot what? Hot tips. Oh. Tips. And if it does leave you wanting more, you're in luck because Universal and Microsoft have announced that they're finally going to be moving ahead with the Gears of War movie! Yeah! Rod Ferguson, the head of development over at Coalition Games, told Variety, as a way to support the franchise, the next logical step was to make the movie. We've done comics and novels in the past, but the opportunity to work with Universal to bring the movie to life was perfect. Now, who knows if this is actually going to happen or who's attached, but Ferguson did address what a lot of fans are probably thinking, which is, is this going to be another disaster, kind of like Warcraft? He said, quote, I think some video game movies in the past, shots fired, have <laughs> failed because they tried to make a movie for gamers, shots fired. We're finding that line where we can say it has enough lore and canon that it feels genuine to the game, while at the same time going beyond that and asking, okay, what makes a great movie? What a novel question to ask. What's a good movie? That's totally subjective, <laughs> by the way. Okay, I'll be definitely looking out for Gears of War. How about you? Are you gonna play the game? Are you as excited to watch Panda Republic on Animal Planet Go as I am? If you are, <laughs> check out the link below to learn more. I'm Whitney Moore, this is Philip Moore. See you next time. Bye bye. bye. Look out! Ah! 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 Now that your parents are dead. Oh, come on. What? I mean, you saw it happen. There was tons of blood. I don't know how you could have missed it. <laughs> come on, man. It's not nice. Oh, come on! Bat slap! Ah! You're never going to be Robin if you don't learn to tough it up. Wait, I'm going to be Robin? Yeah, why do you think I brought you here, dumbass?